So when we first got pregnant, I was like, oh my god. It's like my whole room, the whole room went spinning. Hi everybody, my name is Jacqueline Victor. I am a Asian singer and I act sometimes. I am married with two children. Jonah and Molly. My husband is Sean Rivera. He's also a singer and from the state. And we've been married for four years this year. Singing has always been a very big part of my life ever since I was a little girl. I didn't think about it, you know. And how do I explain it? It's like when you breathe, you don't think about it, right? You just breathe. So singing is uh, what I would say, it came naturally like that. If you don't think about it, you just sing. Until I think maybe in 4th and 5, someone pointed out to me that, hey, you can sing. And so I was like, oh, okay lah. And it just went from there. I think it was a natural progression from just singing for fun to singing in school a little bit, to singing in club, taking part in uh, competitions. A very natural progression. From the time I was a very young girl, my mom has always been supportive but the people around me like the rest of my family members, they were also very supportive. So this is before I realised I could sing. So I just thought like why is everybody saying things like this to me like hey you can sing and all that and I'm like okay. <laughs> I wasn't listening to myself so to speak. At a young age you, you won't be able to tell. You're just doing something because you love to do it. So when people started pointing it out, I started to pay more attention to it. And my memory of it is that people around me have always always been supportive of music. Lah. Okay, so I got married at the age of 36. We didn't wait, just said, you know what, let's just get pregnant. Because 36 is quite late. You go and see a doctor. Anywhere you'd read that above the age of 35 is you're considered high risk. So even though we were very healthy, uh, my husband quit smoking a year before we tried. I was working out. You know, it was a big part of my life, working out, eating well, keeping healthy. You still never know. So it was a very like, an emotional time in the sense that you're thinking about so many things. Like you want your child to be healthy. You have so many concerns as a mother, right? So when we first got pregnant, I was like, oh my god. It's like my whole the whole room went spinning. Like, because we just tried, like really try lah. And got pregnant straight away and I was sick. I had to travel to the States. It was hot here. It was winter in the States. And my trip was like, in total, I think maybe six days including traveling time. So it was a really short window of time. In uh, November of 2015, I remember it was Thanksgiving and that's why I was going over. And I was so sick. I thought I had dengue or something. And with all of that, right, still managed to get pregnant. So we were very excited. I was shaking. We were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So very excited lah. I'm actually very private. A lot of things, like being an artist in Malaysia, to some degree you are under the limelight. People want to know about you, what you're doing. So being pregnant in Malaysia is like, <gasps> everybody gets really excited and like, I don't like people fussing over me. I didn't really announce it for a long time. Because I kept it quiet, I feel it didn't really affect my career except for this one incident about three weeks before I was to deliver. I was still very much active, still singing, still working out and all that. But uh, there was this one gig early August where they said oh I'm so sorry we don't want to be responsible if anything happens I would say it affected my career but it's something that sticks out to me when, when I'm talking about uh, being pregnant and being in the industry yeah. every first mother has this vision and everything's gonna go according to plan but you soon discover that the baby has its own time you know however he's gonna come into the world is really up to him lah. So, or her. I did the whole hypno-birthing thing. The gentle birthing, breathing. I went with my husband, my friends and all that. The idea was to have a water birth using the breathing technique and all that. But I went into hospital 5cm dilated already. By the time they put the belt on me, I was already in active labor. I was having pains every 2-3 minutes. But upon arriving at the hospital at say maybe about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning to the next day 3pm, I only dilated a maximum of 8cm. So that 3 cm to, to get there, it was 30 over hours and in the end, and I couldn't sit down and I couldn't lie down, I was walking and stopping every 2-3 minutes to breathe, walking. So in a way, hypnobirthing helped me with uh, going without pain relief for 27 and a half hours and then I took the epidural because like, I'm like, what's happening? Nothing's happening. It's not, I'm not dilating. 
so I took it and then I could and then at least I could lie down so I, I think I took a short nap Do- doctor came back he said okay I'm going to induce you I said do whatever doctor <laughs> doesn't I'm with the epidural now I'm not gonna feel anything uh, okay I'm going to rupture your water bag okay so in the end no choice I had to have an emergency c-section but at the moment I didn't care because all you're worried about is uh, you know the health of the baby and everything is okay and he was okay lah is amazing because I'm working constantly at, right at the moment and he works from home I mean he does his music at home and everything so it's, he's been a lifesaver in the sense that because um, we don't have a helper he has been very hands on amazing lah the big kids don't get to spend one-on-one time with each other because the kids you know Jonah is once the attention I've been working I'm out of the house and then I come back he is exhausted already can you imagine like juggling two kids so he's exhausted and he's like I really gotta take a nap so he goes and then I take over in a way it's brought us together but at the same time I won't say pulled us apart a bit but you lose that when a child comes in automatically we tend to focus on the kids which I don't think is a good thing lah because it's healthy that the people who hold the, the fort together are the husband and wife. Some time together is better than no time at all. So <laughs> we got to work on that. In my case anyway, it's like you automatically don't really think about yourself anymore. You like the children, whether they ate, whether they drank, whether they're happy, whether they're feeling well or not. It's like I don't buy things for myself anymore. So it's more focused on the children. Surely having children would impact you and your life and the way things have been going before they arrive. But I don't even think about it and I tell you why. It's because the age I was when I got married, I was like so ready for it. I was embracing it. We're both like super ready and it, this is the next step. Yes, my life has changed but I don't even think about it like that. Not like a negative thing or anything. It's very positive. I live for my children, my family. Yeah. Having enough time to spend with them. You know, when I go home and my son is like all over me, I feel so bad that I had to go out of the house in the first place, you know. But life has to go on. Children need to know that, you know, your parents have to work. I wish I had more time with them. I don't want to spoil my children, but I want to give them the best that I can. Even if you took a child to an orphanage, they won't get it. Because the children there are actually quite happy. Because again, they don't know anything. They don't know any better. They never had things in life, so they're happy. I, I guess i got to wait lah, for them to get a bit older, when we can really have like proper conversations with them. Right now, he only knows he wants this, he wants that, he wants his fruit, he wants his milk. You know, he's still very young. I want them to be good people. Women, mothers are superhuman beings. From the time you are pregnant till the time you give birth to raising your children, we have this natural maternal instinct in us to watch over our children. I would like to call, you know, the opportunity of being able to call yourself a mother. When you have a child that is a gift, do so much for ourselves and our children and our families. You shouldn't beat yourself up and you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. Embrace it. The strength of a woman is something else. Mothers are amazing. So don't be so hard on yourself. Just take it in stride and uh, just do what you do naturally.